everybody, Aaron, Otter Creek Farm and BushhoggingServices.com. I am on an adventure. I am in the process of renting an excavator for the first time. I have watched uh, lots of videos on YouTube of you know guys that do this for a living, and it's pretty evident that uh, an excavator provides a lot of opportunities for different types of work. So I decided I am going to rent an excavator for the weekend. Uh, while I conduct a search for finding uh, a Kubota excavator, a new one, and I'm looking at the uh, KX040, the KX057 uh, are the two that seem to be in um, like my price range and functionality range. The 040 is certainly the most popular uh, because of its capabilities for the weight uh, from everything that's been done, I've seen online uh, researching this. But I also uh, have said this before that I will always buy as much machine as I can afford because I can always use less horsepower. Uh, I can never add it after you bought the machine. So all you end up with is buyer's remorse if you ultimately need more than your current machine is able to provide. Uh, a big piece of the work that I do is the brush cutting. And as you know from my videos, the you know, the, the 4707 Massey tractor with the bush hogs on that I have uh, for field cutting and things like that are great. So I tend to attract that type of and market to that type of customer. So uh, I want to be able to uh, expand that and put a brush cutter on the end of the excavator and be able to trim roads, uh, cut around ponds to do sloped areas. Uh, pond maintenance is one of the things that I have turned multiple jobs down on because I don't have a, you know, a vent track or something that can handle the slopes, but with an excavator with the right reach, I can actually reach down and cut it with a brush cutter. So, um, you know, that's what I'm looking at being able to do. It's, I'm a little bit different in that, you know, I'm a weekend warrior, so all I'm really concerned about is paying for the machine. I don't need to turn a profit. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys watching this video are going to be looking at this for um, you know for a living so uh, you know my requirements are different than yours but uh, you know everything that I do can be scaled up to be a business um, you know more of a full-time business you know I, I just have more flexibility in being successful than than a lot of people do uh, you know if I don't get a job one week or the next week or whatever it's not a big deal to me uh, if this is what you're doing for your living obviously that's problematic you've got to have steady income so I respect you for that and that commitment I wish I could do it full-time it's actually what I enjoy doing more than most of the other work that I do which is typically on computers uh, throughout the course of the week so uh, you know stay tuned uh, I'll take you on my very first time touching an excavator I've got a uh, you know I think I sat in one at the dealership the other day and didn't move anywhere, but kind of moved the controls and watched the uh, the equipment move. So I didn't I didn't actually use an excavator. So you will see what it is like for someone who has zero experience on an excavator go through that process. So if you are concerned about the controls and being able to jump in the seat and do that type of work, I'll show you how hard it's going to be. And I don't think it's going to be that hard. I don't think I'll have any of the fine motor skills, but the basics are somewhat similar to operating a tractor and the controls and running a grapple and things like that. So add a few more things into that equation and I suspect by the end of um, an eight hour period, I'll be digging pretty well and getting my projects done relatively rapidly. So I'm excited, looking forward to it and uh, stay tuned and then we'll take you along for the ride. So here's the unit I rented. TB240. Uh, unfortunately, it's an open station. I thought it was going to be closed. It's still a little bit hot here in Florida, but the size machine is close to the ones that I'm looking at investing in. So I thought this would be a good uh, training exercise for me to try a machine of this size and get a feel for it. So pretty excited. It should be a fun day. Uh, just out there playing in the dirt. All right, folks, here we are. We are at the farm and going to go ahead and get the machine unloaded. Got it warming up now. Honestly, uh, I should have paid better attention to uh, the guys when they were loaded up. They asked me if I know how to use it. I know I'll figure it out, but um, 
little bit tight getting it off the trailer, so we'll get uh, we'll get set up, get it off here, and see how it goes. All right, so for all you people just like me and have no idea, first time I'm touching the excavator controls. My first objective is to get the blade up, which it's indicated on this. Let's see if I can do this part. not down all the way. Let's try this again. Alright, back is blade up. Feel that's, that's now up all the way, so I need to bring the boom up. Pull back on this. Now I need to walk forward. I'm going to use the hand controls. It went slow. That's actually front, and I was pushing him that way, so I was going to go the wrong direction. So, if I've learned anything about equipment, anything that you do fast and it breaks, it costs more money. So, starting out nice and slow on anything, a new bush hog or a new machine, it's going to pay dividends when you go to break something. Pointed towards the stuff I want to go. That's all I got to do. I watched a YouTube video on my way over here, and one of the things that I learned was the transportation requirements uh, between a well anything over 10,000 pounds, right? Is notably different than anything under 10,000 pounds. The requirements, the, the tie downs, the, the legalities, the federal regulations and things of that nature are notably different over 10,000 pounds. So I'm very interested to see how I like this particular machine being about an 8,000 pound machine. And it, it solves a bunch of problems for me in that I've got a trailer that will handle this uh, it's a much steeper slope than that one that they, they uh, rented me, but uh, so I probably will save money on not having to deal with getting a trailer of some sort, and I don't have to worry about quite the same restrictions on tie downs, weights, you know, federal regulations, things like that. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping this machine is everything that I want it to be. So I can stick with it. So now I'm going to turn you guys around as I approach this stump for the first time and figure out these controls. At this point, I'm just struggling to figure out which lever to move and what direction to move it. It's taking just a lot of thought to try to figure out, okay, what do I want to do and how does that translate out to the boom? Okay, 
will definitely be glad to see this stuff go. It's been an eyesore for quite some time and I have to work around it in this little area where I usually keep uh, implements. There's not going to be a safe stump or palmetto bush on this property. In case you're curious, that's a Bama light brush cutter. It will cut up to four inch trees but I've actually cut six inch if it's soft wood like pine. Uh, you can keep it down right down next to the ground and slowly back into it and it'll cut right through them, especially if the blades are sharp. It's what I use for the heavy duty. Yes, there were palmettos here before as well. So it's what I use for the heavy duty cutting situations. It still is not great at cutting palmetto uh, stalks, you know, the four to six inch thick stalks because they're very fibrous but uh, it can get through them, especially if the, uh, the blades are sharp. That's kind of the key thing on that. This is pretty painful to watch, just seeing how slow it is and knowing how much I improve by the end of the day. It is a fair representation of somebody that has never done this before, how you're gonna start at this level and quickly migrate through to you know, being reasonably quick at you know, basic movements by the end of the day.
finishing the area actually was a little bit harder than I thought it was. Getting that bucket flat and swinging it, pushing the dirt sideways with the bucket to smooth it out. Just took a little bit more skill than I had. I didn't want to spend a huge amount of time on it because I know the, the clock is running on the hours that I have available and I want to get a lot of other things done. So I did leave it kind of rough, thinking I'll come back and I can get that box plate on the tractor and uh, it only take a couple seconds to make that look good. What I needed to do is just make sure I got the roots and the components out. That would be caught up in the box plate as I was trying to smooth it out and move it back to grass. So now I'm heading out into the field and I have a tree that is growing up next to a larger, more mature tree and there's no point in having these two trees this close to one another. So I am taking out this smaller tree, I'm not sure what type of tree it is, but this was just a good opportunity to exercise my skills and to get this tree out of the way while I had a machine that was capable of doing it relatively easily. So just pretty typical tree removal. That's 
by to see this excavator could pick up the entire tree. I was a little concerned about the torque that the tree was going to put on the thumb in the bucket, considering how long it was, and I was going to put it into the tree line, and it wouldn't go into the tree line evenly, so it would actually twist the thumb on the bucket. Quite a bit of force and torque, so it held up though. So it was, it was nice to see. It's not tough. I moved up to the entrance of the property and I'm working on is digging the ditches that used to be a little bit deeper, cleaning them out. The sand has kind of drifted down into the into the holes, into the ditches, and what happens is during the rainy season it'll rain hard and that whole area actually floods with three to six inches of water. And so what I'm trying to do is create a place where the water can go down pool versus staying on the road and you drive on the wet road and it creates ruts and problems in your road so I want to help that water get off and also do some shaping of some ditches that lead up to this particular low area where my entrance is and uh, hopefully avoid water even getting to that area faster than it can drain and uh, soak into the ground.
Okay, folks, that is eight hours. Uh, time flies when you're having fun for sure. So I just want to give you a, what's my take on being a first time operator of an excavator. Uh, not a problem, you know, in general, not a problem. You're not going to run out and do fine finish work, making the uh, ditches look all nice and pretty. Uh, you just, you know, the, the motor skills just aren't there yet. But from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, uh, night and day, uh, you know, especially if you're used to running a tractor. Um, the last two things that I worked on, I dug the pond a little bit deeper just to experience that. And also I've got a pile of uh, lime rock that I wanted to uh, break down because it's full of vegetation, things like that. So I want to start pulling that, that pile apart. And I would say by the end, um, you know, doing those two things, I was moving very quickly, um, you know, and with a lot of confidence too. Very few missteps, you know, in the beginning, you know, you're, you're trying to extend something when you're trying, you know, you extend it when you're trying to pull it or you're trying to, you know, close it and you open it instead or you swing one, one way or the other. Uh, by eight hours of doing this, yeah, that was not gone, but, you know, 80, 85% gone. And, um, you know, the, uh, the other thing that I kept thinking about running this machine, which is like an eight ton machine, uh, I was looking at, or am looking at the KX040 uh, from uh, Kubota. And I'm not sure that I like the size. I mean, it seems like it's a little underpowered at certain times. It seems tippy at certain times, uh, you know, pulling some palmetto bushes out of the out of the ground, you know, a lot of rocking and rolling with that. Uh, you know, the extra weight that the, uh, uh, was it the KX057 uh, uh, going from 8,000 to 12,000 pounds in 40 horsepower to 57 horsepower is a big jump, right? But if you've watched any of my other videos in the past, the thing that I keep harping on is buy as much horsepower as you can afford and is practical. You got to have both of those things. Uh, you can never add horsepower or capabilities to your uh, equipment, right? You can't add more horsepower. You can't, if it's 40 horse, it's 40 horse. You're never going to get 50 out of it. Uh, if you need 50 uh, on occasion and you have a 50 horsepower machine or a 57 horsepower machine, that's great. You can always use less, but you can't add horsepower. So that is something to consider. Uh, I was watching uh, a video on my way here. I believe it was Dirt Perfect. I'll have to, I'll have to check, but um, he was with Officer Hoover, which uh, Tractor Time with Tim is also interviewed with, but they were talking specifically about securing equipment and how things change quite a bit once you get over 10,001 pounds. So there is a consideration there uh, with the size of the chains, the calculation of the tie down points, the number of tie down points, the location, all of those things start to come into play when you get over that 10,001 pound uh, you know, uh, weight limit. But is it worth it? You know, and I'm going to have to decide what route I want to go. I'm thinking, you know, a lot of what I do here in uh, northwest Florida in the Ocala Gainesville area is brush hogging. And one of the things that I really want to get into is getting a, uh, a rotary cutter on the front of the excavator. And I'm just thinking, you know, how big of a cutter can I get with the tippiness of a machine of this size, you know, the bouncing around and things like that. Uh, I want to be able to move quickly and fluidly and not have to, you know, adjust so much, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm out trying to produce revenue, because every, every minute, you know, it counts as money, right? And the longer the job takes, the less money you're actually making. So, um, you know, that is a big, big consideration that I'm going to have to weigh. Uh, you know, the other thing that I'm going to lose if I go to the uh, 057 is the six-way blade and uh, there's a couple youtubers that uh, use exclusively the uh, the kx040 and they swear by the six-way blade and i can see the versatility and the benefit of being able to do a six-way blade when you are uh, you know building pads shaping roads and things of that nature um, you know but in this machine with these tracks i found i could push very little dirt you know it was just uh, really disappointing and when I was trying to you know uh, straighten the dirt back out in the area that I had just worked and you know one of the things that you saw I was actually I, I uh, cleared an area that used to look like that and I want it to look like that or look like that 
and to get there you know you've got to be able to go through the soil and rake out all the palmetto roots and sometimes when people are doing land clearing especially if they're preparing for a home or something and they need that pad put in place you can't have a bunch of roots underneath the underneath the slab right so you've got to be able to pull those things out so i was raking the soil until i hit the palmetto roots and then i'd grab it and pull it out but then i would try you know which leaves it really rough and then trying to smooth it back over you know it just didn't have the traction or the push power that i was really looking for to be able to uh, smooth stuff back out so uh, i've got some hard choices you know really the the biggest thing that i'm going to encounter with the 057 is added cost and the uh, loss of the six-way blade so um, i've got to decide if the type of work that i'm going to be doing is more important than potentially having a six-way blade um, you know if i get a tilt bucket i can make up some of that loss of the six-way blade i'll definitely get a four-way but you know, I can make up some of that loss capability with a tilt bucket. It's just not nearly as efficient to use a tilt bucket to shape a road as it is to be able to drive down it. Quite honestly, an excavator is not very efficient either. You know, if you're going to shape a road, you need a tractor with a, you know, uh, a you know, box blade on it to really do it quickly and efficiently. So, um, you know, I don't anticipate spending a lot of time trying to shape a road with a six-way blade. So, you know, if I had to decide right this second, I would probably go with the 057 over a uh, eight ton machine. Uh, just my personal preference. Uh, it does, uh, the other thing that it does do to me is it changes my trailer situation. I have a trailer that'll hold this uh, heavy of a machine, but it's got two 5,500 pound axles. So I put a 12,000 pound machine on there. I'm pushing my luck and then you start adding a t uh, implements to that and now you're over your weight limit. So. Uh, if you get pulled by DOT, you're going to get you know, taken out of service right on the side of the road. Um, so as, it means I got to have, you know, I would have to take my 40 foot trailer everywhere I go when I want to use the excavator, which ultimately means I ended up having to get another trailer, right? So uh, I can't tell you how beneficial this was for me to rent this. It cost me 750 bucks for the day with the trailer. Um, you know, I've seen that to be about average in our market. But it really, A, it gave me a lot of confidence that I can do this and I can pick this up relatively quickly. Uh, I mean, I went around my property, I've got 30 acres, and I went around and did almost my entire list of things that I wanted to do. Now, I've got more that I can do, dig the, you know, dig the pond deeper, that's kind of an ongoing thing. But, you know, uh, the amount of efficiency that you get out of this type of machine is, is awesome. And... You know, I get a lot of calls for pond maintenance, you know, retention pond maintenance and, uh, you know, private pond maintenance. And being able to reach out and cut is a moneymaker in my area. And, uh, you know, the reach of this boom is also a little bit disappointing. I, I could use a little bit more reach and more horsepower to get the job done. So hopefully this helps you and uh, go out and rent one if you're thinking about making this investment. You can't go wrong, uh, I promise you, uh, you know, You'll, you'll learn so much about your, you know, your skills and how quickly you can pick it up and your confidence level. And uh, you know, it'll make that decision that much easier. You'll take a little time. Uh, like I don't plan on trying to do anything uh, probably for at least a couple of weeks until my skills get to the level that I feel like I can go out and sell uh, you know, a good job with the excavator, unless it's just you know, cutting trees, anybody can do that. But any kind of dirt work where you're shaping things and, and uh, combing ditches and things like that where it has to really look good at the end, that's gonna take some time to develop that skill set. But I got stumps out, I got palmettos out, I got pine trees out, I knocked over trees, I dug ditches, uh, you know, I dug my pond, I, I dug a pile of lime rock. So all of that in one eight hour day uh, is just awesome. So good luck to you if you're thinking about doing this and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you know, shoot me some comments. Uh, you know, if you got some operator tips for me, throw them my way. Um, I know nothing about operating an excavator except eight hours. So uh, good luck to you, thanks.